Shall we bow our heads in word of prayer? Father, again we come in the precious name of Jesus, asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the word. Speak to our hearts once again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard a preacher preach beyond himself or not, but <laughs> say, Brother Morgan, what are you preaching it for? Well, I remember hearing John Wesley said to his preachers when they were preaching about sanctification, he said, preach it because you've got it, and if you don't have it, preach it until you get it. So <laughs> we'll preach, preach it until we get it. I'm trusting that uh, you'll go along with me and uh, see what we can find. Uh, if you have your Bibles, I want us to turn to the book of Joshua, the first chapter, <clears throat> and uh, beginning with this sixth verse. God is speaking to Joshua. He says, Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do all according to the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his precious word. I want you to notice in this scripture that I read that God commanded Joshua to be strong. That was a command. And I don't know whether you've ever thought or not, but how, how can God command a man to be strong? How many people think, oh, I'm just so weak, I just, don't, I just can't do much, I'm weak. But God commands every saint of God, it's a, it's a command from God. And I thought, well, how can God command me to be strong? Uh, and neither be afraid, Neither be dismayed. God commands these. And I marvel that God can command a man to be strong. And uh, if that's the case, how could he do it? Now, I want you to know that this command had nothing to do with his strength, with uh, Joshua's strength. Didn't have a thing in the world to do with his strength. And when God commands you to be strong, it doesn't have a thing in the world to do with your strength. If that's the case, he couldn't command it. Paul said somewhat the same thing in Ephesians when he said, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, Joshua here went out, and to give us an illustration of this, Joshua went out and looked at the walls of Jericho, and he saw a man with a drawn sword. And he said, are you with us or for us or against us? And uh, he said, I'm captain of the army of the Lord of hosts. I'm a captain of the heavenly host. In other words, Joshua, there is another army. There's the invisible army that's in the heavens, and I'm captain of that army, and you take off your shoes or you're standing on holy ground. In other words, your army doesn't amount to much. There is an unseen army that's here, and uh, uh, if you want to get in on this, the way to get on this is to take off your shoes for your standing on holy ground. Joshua had to submit to the captain of the Lord of hosts, and then he was strong. When he got his shoes off, he was strong when he submitted to the Lord. Now, I want you to know that that army, that same army that was there fighting in, in the walls of Jericho, God wanted him to know that when they came to march around Jericho that his army wasn't going to push those walls down. Joshua's army wasn't going to push those walls down. Uh, that invisible army was going to push them down. 
And he was strong in that invisible army, not in his own. But he was strong in that invisible army. I want you to know that that invisible army is still here today. Do you know that that same army is available for you? Do you know that you can be strong in that same invisible army? It didn't go out of business. It didn't go back to heaven and stay there and say, well, that was nice Joshua had it, but what can I do? I want you to know that same invisible army is even around us now. The same thing as Elisha saw the same thing, you remember, when he was surrounded there in one of the cities. The king of Syria came to get him and surrounded the city. And uh, in the morning, Elisha's servant said, Master, what should we do? We're surrounded by the enemy. And he, Elisha said, now, don't get excited because he said, don't worry. He said, there's more with us than with them. Do you know that there's more with you than with the enemy? And he said, Lord, open his eyes. Wouldn't it be wonderful if God could open our eyes to the invisible army that's around us to help us? Uh, there'd be no more murmuring, grumbling, or complaining of me, saying, Brother, I'll tell you, there's more with me than with them. So, there is an invisible army around us, and uh, Joshua got it by taking, by taking off his shoes. In other words, he got it by, he got strong by surrender. I remember one time going to hear L.A. Maxwell of Canada, that great saint of God. Well, Brother Robold and I went to Winona Lake where he was speaking at a Youth for Christ convention. And uh, the power he preached, it was such a powerful sermon. And Brother Robold and I went up to speak with Brother Maxwell afterwards, and Brother Robold said, Brother, I don't know how in the world I can ever attain to what you're preaching. And Brother Maxwell's answer was simple. He said, you don't attain to it, you sink to it. And here's a great deal of our struggle is in getting off our shoes to surrender. Not in trying to be strong, but in surrendering. He said, God, then, then God can command me to be strong if he provides the strength that I can surrender to. There is strength available for every one of us for anything if we can surrender to it. Well, I hope you can get that. There is strength for anything you have to face if you can surrender to it. You'll never get it by struggling for it. That'll be your strength, and that strength will never do. Your strength will never do. But you can surrender to the strength that God will give, and that strength will see you through. I come to a verse of Scripture here that I, I trust God will help us with. When Jesus, in John, the fourth chapter, met the woman that had come to the well for water, and uh, if you remember Jesus asked her for a drink, and uh, she marveled that a Jew would do that. And Jesus said, if you'll ask me for a drink, I'll give you a drink, that you'll never thirst again. And then he went on to talk about, and she was asking him the question, well, we know that uh, Jesus said salvation is of the Jews, and she said, we Samaritans believe that worship is in this mountain. And uh, the Jews believe that worship is in Jerusalem. Now, I want you to notice what Jesus said. He said, the time is coming, and now is. When neither will they say in this mountain, nor Jerusalem. For rather, that must have been hard on the Jews. Do you, do, you, do you catch what that means? But he said, but the time is coming when, God, when men will worship God, not on the mountain or in Jerusalem, but in spirit and in the truth. And God seeketh such to worship him. He's seeking for those who worship him in spirit and in truth. 
Now when he said the time is coming when not, not, uh, not have a worship experience in this mountain, well, that would include every mountain in the world. If you want an experience of worship, don't you go to any mountain in the world to get it. Nor in Jerusalem. If you want an experience of worship, don't you go to any cathedral anywhere in the world. Jerusalem was symbolic of every city, and here that encompasses the whole world, of all of nature. I think it was Meister Eckert, that great saint of the 14th century, said, if we have a worship experience at a beautiful sunset, now hang on to your seats, he said, it's because of our defective nature. Did you get that? He said, if we give a worship experience at a beautiful sunset, he said, it's because of our defective nature. You are with me now. You see why I said I'm preaching beyond myself. So that there's not a temple anywhere in the world or you can have a worship experience. If you do, it's because of our defective nature. So this mountain includes all of nature, all sunsets, all gardens, all beautiful things. Say, oh, if I just get there, I can get there. I could just worship God. And my striker said, that's a defective part in your nature if you've got to have a beautiful garden. You're still with me? I said I was preaching beyond myself. I have a sneaking feeling I'm preaching beyond some of you too. <laughs> so, Jerusalem, all the beautiful temples. I've been in some beautiful temples, and some of you have too. I've been in St. Peter's in Rome, St. John's in New York, oh, this beautiful cathedral in Washington, D.C., and that's a beautiful cathedral. I'm not doubting these beautiful cathedrals. That's worth a trip to Washington, D.C. just to see it. It's a beautiful temple. But the Word of God says, the pure in heart shall see God. I used to think that was sometime out in the future. My heart was pure. Someday I'd get to see God. That isn't what it says. The pure in heart shall see God. When? Now. Not sometime in the future, but right now. It's when we can get to the place where we see God in everything. The good times, the bad times. And we'll see God in the bad times just as well. The pure in heart will see God in the bad times as well as the good. Come on, I want you to stick with me. The pure in heart will see God in all their trials, all their difficulties. They'll see God there as much as when they're having a marvelous time of worship like we had this morning. We'll see God in our trials just as much in the trial and difficulty. The pure in heart will see God in everything in their life. As Stephen mentioned this morning, he talked a little about the so sovereignty of God. He's in everything. He's in everything. If you're trusting and submit to him, then his hand is in everything, and you can see God. In every difficulty you face, you'll see God there. His hand is in it. The pure in heart will see God. You see, God is a little, but it's a little like, or a lot like Jacob. When he saw that ladder going to heaven and angels ascending and descending, and he had a real worship experience after, he said, God was in this place and I didn't know it. How many times is God in a place and we don't know it? And if we don't know it, we don't get anything out of it. I think Meister Eckert said God is as much with a twig on the ground, but the twig doesn't know it. The only difference between me and the twig is I know it. Glory. So, 
Uh, Meister Eckert, let me give you another quotation from this dear great saint of God. The Pope at Rome has quoted him, and, and uh, Tozer's quoted him, and well, many of God's ministers have quoted him. He said, our, the problem with our worship is that our worship is confined to time and space. We can worship if the time is right and if the space is right, if the place is right. I want this to soak in because I want to tell you I'm I'm on I'm I'm heading for something I hope we I hope I can get there, and I hope you'll go along with me. Our worship is confined to time and space. That's why we can worship on a beautiful mountain because it's in a place, it's in time, it's in space. We can worship there, but God is seeking for those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. Look at Mary and Martha when Lazarus died and the Lord stayed four days and then came and uh, Mary and Martha went to him and said, Lord, if you had been here, if you'd been in this spot, time and place, if you'd been in the right place at the right time, this wouldn't have happened. She was confining Jesus to time and to place. That's why I love this dear man, Abraham, when he was traveling on this earth, he wasn't confined to time and space. He was looking, it says, for a city, but not any on this earth. He was looking for a city God built, one that had foundations, one that would last forever. Lot was looking for a city on this earth. He found it, but it was time and space, and he lost it. So Abraham was looking for a city that God built, if we could get a hold of the kingdom of God, many of the things that disturb us would drop by the wayside. If we could see God's hand in everything, our little hearts wouldn't be disturbed. Paul said, rejoice evermore. And St. Augustine said, you cannot rejoice evermore in the realm of time and space. St. Augustine said that. You can't rejoice evermore. You can't be a rejoicing Christian all the time. If you're confined to time and space, you can't do it because tomorrow may be a bad day. I think this is wonderful. Yeah. I don't know about you, but <laughs> I'm preaching to myself and I'm enjoying it. We're affected by time and space. And we can not rejoice, for too many things can go bad. If you're confined to time and space, think of all the things that have happened to you that you don't like. You're confined to time and space, and you're occupied with all these things that have gone bad. You can't rejoice anymore. That's why we don't have many rejoicing Christians. They rejoice in time and space. What would happen if we could rejoice and God is seeking for those who worship Him in time and spirit. I really believe if we'd have had a hold of that, I think we'd have all been running around when the choir was singing that wonderful song this morning. Timothy felt like running, I felt like if he'd have started, I think I might have started out with him. Glory. But I have a feeling we, we might have all been that way. I've told before one time, I uh, was down in the West Indies, it was a little island of uh, Antigua. And uh, they prayed for, uh, uh, the pastor prayed, had prayed for a young fellow that was sick, and the doctors didn't know what to do with him. They could stick him with a pin all over. He couldn't feel it. He couldn't feel a thing. And so the pastor prayed for him one day, and I think it was very shortly afterwards. Somebody used to pick him up in a car and bring him to church, but they, they missed him that day. And he thought, now, Lord, I want to get to church so badly. Will you help me to walk? And he just took a step at a time. And finally, uh, the Lord let me be there that morning when he walked in. I never saw a sight like it in my life. I want to tell you that congregation responded. I believe praising God. I think every person in there was on their feet with their hands in the air, praising and shouting. And I was the only one sitting still. See, I was so amazed. I think I didn't know what to do. But they were responding 
properly. They were responding to God like they ought to respond. So if the kingdom of God, if your rejoicing can be in the kingdom of God, then you can rejoice evermore. You'll be a rejoicing Christian no matter what the situation is you're in. We can see if we're, if we're living in, not in time and space, but if we're, gee, God, God's searching for those who worship in spirit. Not in time and space, but he's searching for those. We see God in a beautiful sunset. And I said this, this is Meister Eckert said, it's because our faith, our nature is defective. If a man is walking in the spirit, he can see God in everything. Ah, what a wonderful God we serve. It's the same thing with, uh, we talk about certain things make us holy. I, was, I think it was Meister Eckert who said, it's the holy man that makes everything holy. It's the holy person that makes every job he does holy. The job never makes anybody holy, but the man makes the job holy. That's why Brother Lawrence, uh, I think it was Brother Lawrence, wasn't it, where he'd walk in the, in the monastery and he was as thrilled washing dishes or picking up a straw uh, as he was in worship. God have mercy. Help us. Why? Well, he wasn't confined to time and space, and he was a holy man, and he made everything he did holy. Everything he did was holy because he was holy. If you're a holy person, then everything you do is holy. If you're a mother and got a dozen kids, if you're a holy person, you're doing a holy work. So, we're serving a wonderful, wonderful God. Paul in Romans 8, 18 says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. There's no, yeah, that's not even worthy to be compared. I don't care what your problems, your suffering, everything. It's not worthy to be compared to what the glory is going to be. That ought to knock all the complaining out of us. I don't care what you're suffering. Don't tell me about it. This is the word. Of, I'm reading the word of God. Right. Said the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared. Not, not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. In this realm of time and space, this is where we get into our difficulty. If we could get a hold of this, nothing would upset us. So we find that in the kingdom of God, my record said, if I were a king and didn't know it, I wouldn't be a king. We can only know God as we're aware of God. And as we're aware of him, we get to know him. As I said, he said, God is as near a stick as he is to me, but the stick doesn't know it. And God is trying to get us into that area where we are aware of God in our lives and can see him and his hand in everything about us, everywhere we go, all we do. As I said of Jacob and his ladder, the Lord is in this place, and I didn't know it how many times. We're not aware that God's with us. We're just not aware that God is with us. When you're going through struggles and trials, we're just not aware that God's with us, but he's with us. He said he is. Sir. And he wants us to be aware of him being with us. The pure in heart will see God with us in all of our difficulties and problems and trials and situations. The pure in heart will see God in it. Rejoice evermore. It has nothing to do with circumstances. But so many times our rejoicing is is created because of the atmosphere we're in, which is time and space. But God's searching for someone who'll be as excited uh, no matter what they do. They'll seek God in all their difficulties. They'll seek God there, and they'll be able to rejoice evermore. Uh, 
I think of this one little verse of Jesus where he was speaking about John the Baptist. And he said, there was none born greater of more of women, greater than John the Baptist. But the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John. And what's he saying? He's saying anything on this earth, I don't care how great you achieve, how far you go, as far as it's of the earth and time and space, that it doesn't compare with the person who's walking in the Spirit with God. In other words, a believer, a born-again believer, any born-again believer is greater than John the Baptist. That, that is born of woman. Now, it's not greater as a man. He's the greatest man that ever lived as far as the earth is concerned. But anybody in the kingdom, as far as greatness is concerned, a born-again Christian is greater than John the Baptist. Or greater, let me put it this way, he's greater than any earthly being. He's greater than the President of the United States. If a man can be born again, he's greater than the President of the United States. Oh, God have mercy. How many people would like to be? Look at what they're about knocking themselves out trying to be President of the United States. And you know that you can be born again and be born again of, of the Spirit of God is greater. God offers you something greater if you can see it. If your eyes can be opened to know it, you'll know that God's offering you something greater than being President of the United States. Brother, if we could see that, we could rejoice evermore. So, I'm thankful. Well, maybe I better quit. Oh, pleading the blood. I might try to continue on with that sometime later. But I'm trusting that God will help us, and I trust we all go together. And uh, if I've been preaching beyond you tonight, I pray you'll go with me. And we'll all try to go together and to reach this realm where we can worship God in spirit and in truth.